Right now, a lot of companies are rolling out AI features that lose money. They may look shiny in demos, but in reality, they're confusing customers, making wrong decisions, and just draining their budget. And if you ship or approve one of these features, it doesn't matter that everybody else is doing AI too. You will be the one explaining the failure. And here is the opportunity. Most teams have no idea how to actually check if their AI works. They're using their own metrics and discovering problems only after users complain. If you learn how to build reliable AI systems that give you the exact outcomes you expect, you will be the one who leads teams, gets promoted, and helps others get real value from AI. In this video, we're learning about use case-driven evaluations. That's how you measure an AI system's real impact on your product and customers, not just its accuracy on some benchmark. If you work in technology as a developer, tech lead, engineering director, or product manager, your ability to get reliable results from large language models will shave your career over the next decade. What really matters is if the model accomplishes your actual goals. Drawing from my own experience integrating LLMs into products and from leading practitioners in this area, there is a new playbook for evaluation that you can start using today. Make sure to watch till the end because we will cover practical techniques like error analysis, open coding, axial coding, and binary pass-fail evals all designed to force your AI return reliable results. I will also share how to bootstrap evals when you have little data or how to decide between code-based evaluation and LLM as a judge. traditional metrics don't work to evaluate LLMs. Most evaluation dashboards are full of numbers. For academic benchmarks, they're fine. But in a product context, they're often irrelevant. Generic similarity metrics don't tell you if your flight booking assistant is showing flights that are already booked or confusing customers with irrelevant product recommendations. Even worse, they can create a false sense of confidence and waste engineering time. Instead of measuring abstract notions like helpfulness, we need to start by asking, does the AI meet the user's goal? Did it book the flight correctly? Did it answer the question correctly? Did it hand off to a human when it should? These are binary outcomes that map directly to business value. From my experience building AI products, I've learned to design custom binary pass-fail evaluations based on actual failure modes. Each evaluation should reflect a specific risk or requirement in your application. For example, a support bot might have separate checks for does the reply address the question, is the format correct, does it produce valid JSON, and is the tone appropriate, is it polite and on-brand. Tracking pass-fail for each one yields actionable insights without overcomplicating things. The first step is error analysis. This is where you manually review real users' interactions or logs to understand how your AI system fails. The surface area of possible failures is endless, so you might not know what to measure until you see actual errors. We start by finding a domain expert who knows everything about the task. This could be a product manager, subject matter expert, or customer service lead who understands what good looks like. Having one decision maker eliminates conflicting annotations and accelerates learning. Next, we prepare an initial data set of around 100 user interactions. If you don't have the real data yet, synthesize a data set by sampling along a meaningful dimension. 
intent, persona, and query complexity. One effective technique is to prompt an LLM to generate combinations of dimension values and then use another prompt to turn those into natural language queries. This structured sampling creates diverse scenarios more aligned with real usage than randomly asking an LLM for examples. Then we can perform open coding. The domain expert reads each log end-to-end -end and writes free-form notes about anything that seems wrong, undesirable, or unexpectedly good. Notice that we don't predetermine categories. We just let patterns emerge. This process of looking at the data and making notes captures nuances that off-the-shelf math metrics miss. For passes, we note why the AI succeeded and highlight what could have been better. For fails, we note how it missed the user's end goal or violated a constraint. After reviewing dozens of traces, our understanding of the task evolves. This is normal, criteria drift happens as we gain insight. That's why it's so important to repeat open coding a second time. We will notice new patterns that we initially missed. The goal is to achieve the scenario where we don't see any new failure modes. The next step is to turn qualitative insights into numerical checks. Once we have a list of observed failures, we can structure them using axial coding group similar notes into clusters, and give each cluster a clear, testable definition. Each failure mode should be binary and testable. Evaluators should answer yes or no questions. Unique, to avoid overlapping categories to keep results interpretable. Grounded in data, only include behaviors that we actually observed. For example, in a flight booking, error analysis might reveal these modes, refund issues, handoff failures, conversation tone alignment, seats changing problems, and each captures a recurring failure pattern. With failure modes defined, we can create automated evaluators to detect them. Our choice of the evaluator type depends on the nature of the problem. Code-based evaluators are for objective failures. These are simple assertions that check for things like valid JSON, presence of required keywords, or correct function calls. They're fast, cheap, and deterministic. LLM is a judge. Evaluators are for subjective failures. If you need to assess tone, relevance, or reasoning quality, we can train a specialized judge model using our labeled dataset. Then we measure its accuracy against human labels. We should aim for high true positive and true negative rates and use binary prompts so the judge returns pass fail. Refusal evaluators are to test the ability of the model to say that it doesn't know the right answer. For that, we can construct an evaluation set with answerable and unanswerable questions. We mark it as a pass when the model answers what it knows and refuses what it doesn't, and fail when it hallucinates answers. This makes sure that AI knows when to say, I don't know. With all of these evaluation, LLM-based evaluators are the most expensive. It's still worth using them for persistent failure modes. In most cases, and by default, start with cheap code-based checks, and then look into LLM as a judge evaluators for problems you expect to always come up that are hard to check with code. And always check your LLM as a judge against human judgment and keep your prompts aligned until the result is acceptable. The next step is to turn a working evaluation workflow into something automatable and repeatable. Your product requirements evolve, models change, your outputs and results will change as well. We need to treat our evals as something that evolves together with our product. Integrate them into your CI-CD pipeline so every new prompt, model version, or retrieval technique is vetted before reaching production. It's great to pair with the domain expert and teach them to use evaluation tools like Langsmith to visualize traces and annotate failure modes. If you have a larger organization, you might want to invest in dedicating multiple SMEs and keep record on how much they generally agree with each other. As you go further in your product journey, 
continue monitoring, capture new user interactions, rerun error analysis, and if there are new failure scenarios and new evaluations, add new evaluations. Now, I also want to share some of the most common mistakes in evaluating the effectiveness of AI within products. So make sure not to repeat them. Skipping error analysis. When you jump straight into generic failure categories, you miss real problems that you would otherwise discover at the error analysis stage. Using off-the-shelf metrics as your primary evaluators. Generic scores that you find in benchmarks. These are okay if you're just generally curious about a particular LLM model, but they're not helpful when it comes to evaluating the actual results of an LLM inside your product. Trying to scale evaluation infrastructure before establishing clear pass-fail criteria. This leads to wasted effort because your infrastructure needs may change depending on what you discover during error analysis and categorization. Thinking that your software engineering team can replace domain experts during evaluation. Evaluation should be driven by people who fully understand the task. Don't outsource this critical step, ignoring the fact that your criteria will change and evolve. Your understanding of quality will evolve, so we will need to continuously revisit and refine our definitions, prompts, and notes, believing that A-B testing replaces evals. Evals catch issues with AI results before users do. A-B tests are at the best for optimizing metrics like conversion or satisfaction once you're confident that your AI meets basic quality standards. Now you know about the real mechanism to evaluate if AI in your product is going to work and bring you the results your users expect. Use case-driven evaluation is a mindset shift. It is different from the standard accuracy and LLM benchmarks. It's about systematically measuring how well your AI meets user goals. By grounding evaluations and error analysis, defining binary failure modes, and building evals that stem from your product success criteria, we create a continuous improvement loop that drives real value. The techniques that we covered, like assigning a subject matter expert, error analysis, open coding, Excel coding, pass-fail evaluators, and LLM judges create the foundation of the approach that you can take as an expert that saves your company money by avoiding failed AI projects. It pays off by catching critical issues before users do and aligning your AI with business objectives. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. Your reality has changed. You're stuck in your career. You're either using AI or being used. Do you still believe success is guaranteed? You feel it's time to wake up. Old strategies don't work anymore. Welcome to the real world. It will never be the same again. You need to fight for your future. Learn to spot truth from lies. I will help you. Together, we will win.